Hey, sixth graders, welcome back. We are continuing on with our weather patterns unit. Today we are going to do lesson 2.3, either following along in Amplify or in your packet or just on a piece of paper or in your notebook that you're using at home for your learning. Pencil, pen, something to write with and something to write on and we'll be ready to go. Okay. So lesson 2.3 is simulating a large storm. Our goal today is to investigate what determines how much an air parcel will cool and how this cooling effect impacts the amount of rain. We will do this by reviewing the article, the one we read yesterday, and building different storms in the sim. Quick peek at our vocabulary so far. No new words. Uh, that we learned in our last lesson. We just kind of reviewed and focused in on our air parcel, a little more about clouds and condensation and energy, and then temperature is sort of our new focus for this chapter. And remember, we learned about temperature when we did the thermal energy unit. Okay, so let's get into this lesson. So our warm up today. In the last lesson, we read about a mega flood that happened in California. The flood happened because of a series of huge rainstorms that occurred. So below is a set of weather events that caused the great flood. And these are all the events, but they're not in the right order. So your job is to put the events in order of what happened using numbers one through six, and you can just write them on the side. So we'll pause for a minute while you complete that warm up. Okay. Hopefully you paused the video and did it on your own time. But let's take a minute to review the important points from the article that we read. All right. So if you would like to pull up the article or take a look at the article and your annotations, that's great. That's a great way to review. I'm going to see what I can remember. Why did warmer temperatures lead to more rainfall? What happened when an air parcel rises higher in the troposphere? And when does an air parcel stop losing energy? So all those things were in the article yesterday. Do you remember? Well, what I remember about warmer temperatures leading to more rainfall has to do with evaporation in the water cycle. I also remember that when an air parcel rises higher in the troposphere, it's because it starts out warmer and therefore loses more energy. And then when does an air parcel stop losing energy? I'm thinking back to thermal energy for this one too. I know that energy transfers from hot to cold and I know that when things reach equilibrium the energy transfer stops. So I'm going to use that knowledge and what we read about yesterday to answer that question. An air parcel stops losing energy when dot, dot, dot. Do you know? When the air parcel and the surrounding air are the same temperature. Okay, so that's a little get our heads back in the game for weather patterns. And now we're going to move into the sim. So I'm just going to read through the packet a little bit, and then I'm going to pull up the sim and we can do it together. If you have access to the sim, I suggest you pause the video and take your packet and go play around in the sim and fill out the table, get all the data, and then come back and see if you got it right. If you don't have access to the sim, that's fine. I'm going to do some of the work right here, right now, so you can watch and see. All right, so this packet just reviews a little bit about how the sim works. We've looked at the sim before. What we're going to do today specifically is model clouds with severe rainstorms and different rainstorms. So I'm going to pause and switch over to the sim. All right, so I'm in the sim and I'm in the setting that allows me to adjust the sunlight to surface and the surface water. And so I'm going to check real quick with the packet. We're setting our surface water level to five. I see that right here and our sunlight to level four. Let's go to the sim and see what happens. Sunlight to level four, so I can slide this over. 
and our surface water to level five. Okay, and then we're gonna run. All right, I see sunlight coming down. It's hitting the surface water. What's happening? I see things are changing. The air parcel water vapor number is changing. I see the temperature is changing. I see the air parcel is rising. Look at all the energy that's going out. Okay. And now there's rain. I see rain coming down. All right. So that happened pretty fast. So let's see if we can run that again. Here we go. Sunlight, surface water, and run. Let's observe that again. Our sunlight energy is coming down. I notice that this is changing. The air parcel water vapor is changing. The temperature is changing. Now I notice the temperature is changing, it's going down. That has changed and we have our liquid rain. And I also notice that we have our troposphere height and our troposphere temperature. So there's a lot of data. This shows us a lot of stuff. So when we're writing things down, we're recording our data, there's gonna be columns in the chart when we check back with our packet. There's gonna be columns in the chart for all these different things. So factors that contribute to our storms. The temperature, right? Because we saw that the temperature in the air parcel changed. The temperature in the surrounding air. How high it rose, right? That's here. And then information about our water vapor. Now what happens if we go to analyze? We go to analyze. I'm going to slide my screen over so we can capture all of the analyze. Okay, there we go. So right here, it's showing us information. So it's doing calculations. It's showing us our starting, our final, and our difference in our air parcel temperature. And then right here, it's showing us all the energy that transferred out. Here it's showing us about our water, our total water, and then the different forms. So this one in blue here, this liquid water, that is how much rain fell, right? There's a lot of rain in this storm. And then down here, it gives us our rainfall level. So it's putting a, a number of between zero and four on how severe the storm was. So this was a level three storm. All right, so that's how we're reading all this data that's in the sim. All right, we're back to our packet. So this packet conveniently has the data in it from that test, all right? So we can plug it into our chart. And our chart is down here. Move my screen again so I can see what's going on. Okay, our chart is down here. Do, 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 do. If you go to the next page, you will see this chart right here. Okay, test one. This is what we just did, right? We got a rainfall level of three. This was our first test. So we can plug in all of this information. All right, we can plug in the temperature of where the parcel stopped, what was going on in the surrounding air where the parcel stopped. We can plug in how high it rose, the starting temperature of the air parcel, the final temperature of the air parcel, the difference, the energy transferred out. So all this data we can get from the analyze column in the SIM, right? So then your job is going to be, if you have access to the SIM, is to go and do two more tests. You wanna to try to get a rainfall level of two and a rainfall level of four. How are you going to do that? What do you think? You're going to build, you're going to leave the surface water level at five, but you might need to change the amount of sunlight. You might need to change the amount of energy because one of the things that we're studying in this chapter is how does temperature impact rain? So the amount of energy from the sun is going to affect the temperature, which is going to affect the amount of rain. So that's something that you can play around with and see if you can figure that out.
All right, hopefully I had a chance to play around with the sim. If not, I'm going to do one more example for people who don't have access to it. So we're keeping the surface water the same. We're going to change the sunlight. So I'm going to do one where the sunlight is way up. We've got a lot of sunlight coming down. All right, let's run this and see what happens. So look at all that sunlight energy coming in. I see that the air parcel energy temperature down here is rising. I see a lot of air, um, water, a lot of water vapor coming into this air parcel. And now I see the energy is shifting outward. The air parcel is rising. Look at all that rain. What do I notice that's different from the last one? I notice that this is higher, right? Last time I think it was 6.5 kilometers and this time it's 7.5. I notice that our temperatures are now the same, which is what we expect when it stops rising. Now I'm gonna look at the analyze section over here. Look at all that rain. Look at all that rain. Look at all the energy that transferred out. Wow. Like it's all the way over there. There's a really big difference in the temperature from where it started to where it finished. And down here we have a very severe rainfall level. All right. So that shows you that when you've got a lot more sunlight energy, you got a lot more um, temperature, a higher temperature at your starting air parcel, your air parcel is going to rise higher in the troposphere and you're going to potentially get a lot more rain if you've got a lot more surface water that can evaporate. All right. All right, we filled out the table and now we're going to do some analysis of our data. What patterns do we notice? So look at your data table. What patterns do you notice? I mentioned some things when I was showing you the two different storms. I noticed the pattern of sunlight coming down and the temperature of the air parcel rising. And then I noticed that the evaporation or the increase in water vapor was happening. And then the air parcel rose up. So that happened in all the tests. But another pattern that I noticed was that when there was more energy, we got a higher rise of the air parcel. And I also noticed that when there was more water vapor, we got more rain. You prop, there's a lot of other patterns. You might've noticed some other patterns too. What happened when I changed the sunlight? When there was a little sunlight, there was less energy. So the temperature was lower. So when we turn the sunlight way up, what happened? Yes. I hope that you said when we turn the sunlight way up, the temperature went up and we got more energy. So now let's look at our key concepts. All right, here's our key concepts for this lesson. As an air parcel rises, energy transfers from the blank air parcel to the surrounding air until the temperatures become blank. There's some words for you to fill in. When an air parcel starts with a blank temperature, it will rise higher and lose more energy, causing blank rainfall. Again, there's some words that you can use to fill in. Now your challenge is, did you get it? Did you, from this lesson, figure out more information to help you answer the investigation question, what determines how much an air parcel will cool? So here's some words for our word bank, energy, temperature, air parcel, and troposphere. So you get to work on that on your own. All right, so our summary, lesson wrap up. As the air parcel cools, as a result of energy transfer, the warmer the air parcel, the higher it will rise. The higher it will rise, the more rain it will produce. All right, here's a review of our key concepts. All right, and then next lesson, 2.4, we're gonna look at more data and we're gonna do some modeling of the effects of temperature. And we're gonna learn some new key concepts. All right, see you next time.